That was the ethereal sound of Santur, a musical instrument embodying the spirit of Kashmir Valley in India. Namaskar. Welcome to another episode of Mood India, a look at performing arts from the Indian subcontinent. I'm Vrinda Bhandarkar. This will be the second of two segments on Santur played by Madan Oak. Today, he is going to be accompanied on tabla by Abhinay Padhi. Madan Oak was born and brought up in India. He grew up singing and playing tabla. At the age of 19, after listening to a live music concert by the Santur maestro Shivkumar Sharma, he decided to focus on Santur. Madan built his own Santur and has been with it for the last 20 years. Abhinay Padhe is originally from Mumbai, India. He started learn, learning tabla with Sri Nana Mure and then from Pandit Bhai Gaitonde. After coming to US, he continued his training under Pandit Swapan Chaudhuri at the Ali Akbar College of Music in San Rafael. He lives in the Bay Area and has been training a number of aspiring uh, tabla players for last six years. In his day job, he is a computer network engineer. <coughs> In the previous segment, we learned that santur is an acoustic instrument. It is made from maple and walnut wood, and it is in the shape of a trapezoid box. The bridges are made from, of wood, mostly local varieties, and painted dark ebony. Madan santur here has total of 91 strings and 31 bridges. 27 bridges with three strings each, three bass note bridges with two coiled strings each and a bridge with drone strings called chikari which are periodically used to provide tonic bass. The strings are tied on nails on the left side and are stretched over the soundboard on the top of the bridges to the right side in a crisscross manner. On the right are the peg and uh, tuning pegs. We also learned that Sun Santur is a percussion instrument. It is not plucked, it is not strung, it is hammered with two strikers or mallets made of walnut wood. They are used to lightly strike or glide on the strings. Sometimes left hand is used to dampen the strings. We also looked at the history of this instrument as it evolved from its folk origins to its present day adaptation as a classical music instrument. Now that we have, introduced, we have been introduced to this instrument, let us move on. Madan, can you describe how you render Indian classical music on Santur? Uh, Santur is a folk instrument basically. Uh, it, is, uh, it was adopted to classical music later on. Uh, so naturally there were a lot of variations in what a traditional Indian classical music instrument is as compared to a folk instrument and a traditional sitar or a sarod or some instrument like that. So basically uh, there are two different aspects of Indian classical music we take as one is the swara sadhana or 
practicing the notes as such or vocalizing the notes or expression of finding different notes and the combinations of notes that are part of the raga that's one part of it which mm. includes things like alap or rendering of the notes um, and the other one is uh, like you know the aroha auroha which means ascending and descending of the notes and uh, the third one will be something called as sustain and uh, the last one will be the gasit as such when we say alap alap is nothing else but an expression that you are trying to do from the using the notes that are part of the raga raga you know is like a basic scale you use the basic notes of the scale and you improvise on those notes um, i would like to show you some alap so to say which is rendering of the notes there is no rhythm in this this is a very slow movement and there is no rhythm as such so it will this is typically how a musical concert starts is with alap so we are trying to find this combination of group of notes that are part of this rag which is bishr pahadi which is i am going to play right now so so this is how it is uh, that you go on experimenting with the different notes in the rag this is playing with melody without is, any rhythm this is setting the base for the improvisations that you're going to follow later on mm -hmm. um and then the next part is the Can aroha you? and avroha yes so let me show you aroha and avroha typically when you ascend in a scale and descend this is how you do that aroha means ascending avroha means descending that was ascending and descending and you can have different combinations of the left and the right strokes which we have covered last time uh, how we developed that particular art of playing those uh, patterns as such does does the aroha and avro define the the nature of the rag yeah um, every raga has a set rules for aroha and a set rules for avroha so we follow those and play those now in this particular raga and if there is a mishra rag you are playing then of course the other notes will come for example what is a mishra rag mishra rag is a uh, is something uh, what we call as a dhun or uh, uh, you go besides the design rules of the scale of the rag mm -hmm. and you add some extra notes just for the sake of improvisation mm -hmm. there are specific ragas that we have used and we use in indian classical music mm -hmm. uh, which uh, uh, which are called mishra ragas so mishra pahadi will be a mishra or, or the group of notes that i will add to the pahadi rag so it will be called mishra pahadi as such mm -hmm. now how do you add rhythm to this um uh that is the what that is what we call as swara kal uh, you know means the practicing of the string i mean the playing of the notes along with the rhythm as such 
for which we also follow the same kind of patterns that we discussed in the last time. Uh, we make groups of uh, notes and we uh, play them using the left and the right hand combinations. develop and you can uh, improvise uh, your the kal practice or the sama uh, su sura kal practice as such mm -hmm. now how do you structure a performance of a or rendition of a raga in a performance in so, is there a progression to yes, the performance um, typically as i said the alap is the beginning of any musical performance as such so we'll start with the alap which will be something like what i presented earlier which will be followed by jod Mm -hmm. A jod is, it is uh, just a following of a beat. Mm -hmm. There is no rhythmic cycle as such. It's just a beat that we follow, mm -hmm. and you play the jod. Where do you keep the beat on the chikari um, notes or? Yeah, you typically use the chikari for the you know reference as such all the time. So let me show you the jod as such. So the tabla doesn't play. There is no tabla accompaniment right now. We will explore the rag based on this kind of combinations as such. And then the the third part is the jhala, mm -hmm. which is a faster tempo basically of the jod as such. part of it and after that is what we call as the gut that's when the tabla comes into picture and that's when the real accompaniment starts okay. and that's where the question answer kind of uh, session starts after that does that also follow different tempos there are uh, we typically start with a lower speed rhythmic cycles and lower uh, speed uh, compositions as such mm -hmm. and then we tend to increase the speed as we go further into the concert as such mm -hmm. now there are lots of santur like instruments around the world and can you show, uh, can you tell us something about them well uh, santur is originally a indian classical music instrument as you know uh, this was part of the folk music that was being played in india mm -hmm. and uh, as as the time passed you know a uh, lot of people and uh, basically the sufis or the priests and the pilgrims uh, from india as they were traveling all over the world they started taking the instrument all over the world uh, with them and mm -hmm. that's how you see different types of similarities between santur and some other instruments around the world mm -hmm. um, you can find this instrument uh, in different forms uh, in countries like afghanistan you can go to uh, iran iraq uh, with different names of course and uh, even europe america and even uh, far east uh, asia as well do they do they differ in sophistication are they as sophisticated as this or they are simpler the basic theme is the same you know the, the sound box is always the same the difference is typically in the number of notes that you play mm -hmm. the number of strings that you have on the bridges that will differ mm -hmm. but basically the idea is just a sound box strings mm -hmm. and a, a different types of strings also they will use but they will have tuning pegs the nails everything is, uh, is almost a similar thing mm -hmm. so, um, we can uh, talk about the instruments that we have all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, in America, we have an uh, instrument called dulcimer, mm -hmm. hammered dulcimer, mm -hmm. that belongs to the santur category. Mm -hmm. And um, it has uh, um, roots of uh, the instrument in santur. Um, this is the American version of the santur. It is very versatile instrument and it is very easy to play. Mm -hmm. It can have three notes uh, like like we have on Santur per bridge. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. and it supports three octaves. So it's as sophisticated as santur. Then. Yeah, it, the ranges are typically the the same as what santur is. Some some instruments have more octaves in them, like the Chinese instrument Yang Chin has five octaves in it. Mm -hmm. There are some oct some instruments. It should in, be bigger too if it, it is, is bigger, five octaves. It has 175 strings in it, so it's yeah. a lot bigger instrument as such. Now, is dulcimer used in classical music or is it a folk music? Um, Hammer dulcimer is used for all kinds of uh, instruments, I mean um, compositions as such. You can play pop music, you can play uh, you know, light music as such along mm -hmm. with it. And if you go to Europe, there are countries like Hungary and Romania mm -hmm. where this instrument comes in a form and different form and the name of the instrument is called cymbalom. Mm -hmm. um, it is basically used for folk, classical, contemporary music. Um, it has very wide tone and a big volume as such. Mm -hmm. um, it is played with the hammers just like uh, we have but sometimes they have a felt or a wool on the hammer itself so that when you are playing it dampens the sound of it mm -hmm. and uh, it can create a different tonal quality basically. It won't be as light as this. It, it will be, it is almost light, uh, it's, nothing, no, it's nothing heavy as such but it is, uh, it has got wool padded on it and it also has other features of uh, instrument like uh, piano where we have dampers, mm -hmm. uh, those exist on cymbal and that's the only instrument which carries those dampers. None of the other Santur variety instruments have the dampers. Mm -hmm. So it's much more closer to piano in true sense that way. So it's, uh, a, so it's it a very uh, heavy instrument actually and uh, the, it has steel, uh, steel wound strings and uh, it's, it's definitely not a portable instrument mm -hmm. and uh, Hungarian uh, cymbalom has a very special tone. Um, you can adjust the length of the hammers for the style you are playing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to Greece, uh, there is another instrument called santuri. Mm -hmm. it is, the name is also almost similar. Uh, this is also another version of dulcimer. Uh, you can have complete range of major and minor notes and it's fully chromatic, just like a piano. <coughs> mm -hmm. It is a big instrument, it's almost uh, one meter wide mm -hmm. in uh, the length, and it's almost about half a meter on the top. So, how do they get that variety of notes? Because well, they have different sets of bridges on it. So, you have the notes all over the place, and uh, it's, very uh, it's a different style of playing, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, you mentioned about China, the Chinese instrument, is that also part of the classical music tradition of China? They have uh, certain forms of classical music which they play on that instrument. Mm -hmm. It is a popular folk instrument also as such mm -hmm. and um, it is a very old instrument. It, is, it dates back to the Ming dynasty mm -hmm. uh, in the years of uh, I think 1384 to 1644, uh, something like that. So it's a very old. So instrument it's part for of the classical instrument. Yeah, it's part of their tradition and uh, cl traditional classical music as such. Let us come further south to from China to Kashmir and uh, to Santur in the Kashmir Valley. It looks like Santur has its roots in folk music, and even to this day, when there is a Santur recital, I've heard Shiv Kumarji playing. Uh, folk tunes. Can you play for us one yeah, and sure. take us to the beautiful Kashmir Valley? Okay.
for joining us in the appreciation of Indian music. Hope you will join us for the next episode. For all of us here at Mood India, goodbye. Thank you.